welcome to my world, another day, another time, another period to examine things that are of interest at wise. Knowledge is power, health is well. Today the topic revolves around snoring, head check of snoring. Snoring generally is uh, presumed or rather assumed to be uh, not of much uh, consequence that people even joke about it. I've heard the lady say that uh, if the husband or, or wife complains that uh, it is more or less who slept last that is complaining about snoring so that we all snore. But the truth in it is that snoring, if it's too much, when it is really serious, affects our oxygen level. And you know that oxygen is very important. If oxygen is what we take to survive, then if something affects the oxygen level, there is a reason to be suspicious of the harm it will be doing to many organs of the body. So there is a likelihood of relating uh, snoring with some chronic heart diseases. But regardless of what the opinions we have right now, let us sit down and enjoy the analysis and uh, the presentation I am going to make as regards the head check of snoring, the danger that could be in too much snoring. So when you have a situation where somebody is snoring too much, then you need to do the appropriate thing as recommended in the video as you watch. If you like the my presentation, press the like button, subscribe, and be assured. Health check of snoring. Outline. Objective, introduction, types of apnea, research on ulcer, diagnosis, and prevention. Objective, to create the necessary awareness of severe snoring, graduating to obstructive sleep apnea that is increasingly recognized as a disease entity that plays a major role in affecting multiple organ systems. Introduction, from middle age upward, we all occasionally snore depending on our body position while asleep and it is more common in male than in female and usually harmless. But loud, disruptive or frequent snoring can be a symptom of sleep apnea, a serious disorder. Long-term snoring increases our risk of health issues, including decreased blood oxygen level or capacity. That you can see the mild position of sleeping and the mouth is open, so it snores a lot. Snoring sleep apnea explains sleep apnea which means failure to breathe during sleep can be obstructive or non-obstructive. The apnea occurs when the brain fails to signal the breathing muscle that it's time to get active. In obstructive apnea, breathing fails because of a relaxed airways that fails to open up despite the brain insisting. Eventually, something after more than a minute. Without breathing, the brain sounds its alarm urgently enough to jot the muscle of breathing back into action. Sometimes this wake the sleeper, but more often the period of apnea and gasping serve only to rub sleep of its restful and restorative quality. That means during this period, the brain itself is helping us to wake up because that obstruction is already impacting on the brain when the oxygen is not reaching their well. Type of apnea, we have the mild apnea, moderate apnea, severe apnea, and OSA. Mild apnea, the most immediate result of snoring. You have around 94 to 98%, but with mild, it's around 94 most of the time. At the moderate apnea level, the percentage of oxygen to the brain is lower than 94% and you could have a mean of 94%. The severe apnea. In the severe apnea, lowest oxygen saturation recorded with the pulse oximeter is 69%. At this stage, there is a need for further testing by the medical doctor to make a diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea. Research on ulcers. People with sleep apnea have been shown not only to have impaired memory and as a function but also biomarkers changes 
that has to stay with Azemi disease. Some studies have shown an association between sleep deprivation and increased level of two Azemia disease related protein in the brain, the beta myelide and tau. Untreated apnea is associated with increased risk for dementia, stroke, or heart attack. In one study, persons with sleep apnea had a 30% higher risk of heart attack or death than those without apnea. In another study, the frequency of snoring was studied in 46 patients with azemia, 37 with multi infant dementia, and in a random sample of 124 elderly community residents without known diseases affecting higher cortical function, the demented patients were reported to snore twice as frequently as a control subject. No difference in frequency of snoring was present between the patient with AD and MI. In contrast to younger populations, snoring was not significantly associated with cardiovascular morbidity in this elderly population uh, under study. The diagnosis, hematocrit and hemoglobin test. Anemia is a blood disorder that can cause one to be tired and sleepy during the day. The same thing goes for the arterial blood gases, which is done with the oximeter. Thyroid function will also show if it's hyperthyroidism, fatigue and lethargy, and if it's hyperthyroidism, it will also show the fatigue too, which are conditions common with them. Drug and alcohol toxicology is screening. They may cause sleep disorders such as the upward sleeping next curve is another one. A the gold standard is the polysomographic test uh, uh, standard for diagnosis of ulcer. There is also the artigraphic measure, rest and activity circle. It uses a wristwatch type sensor that measures your body's movement day and night over one to two weeks. Prevention. Reduce body weight. When we reduce the body weight, the usual uh, problem associated with uh, snoring because fatty people snore a lot, and that could also mean they could they are, they are prone to such obstructive sleep apnea. And the best way is to advise that they reduce their weight, not using crash uh, programs, but more like physical exercises. Then there is also the mouth exercise, which helps to strengthen the tongue and the back of the throat so that when one sleeps, the, depending on the position usually, uh, the obstruction of the airways will not uh, happen and the uh, apnea would be prevented in a way. But when the mouth exercise uh, is done repeatedly, moving your tongue and part of your mouth in ways that strengthen muscles in the tongue, soft palate and the throat. In one study, three months of mouth exercise led to a 59% reduction in snoring. Quitting smoking. Smoking cigarette is associated with increased snoring. Quitting smoking can help with your strong snoring problem. Additionally, children or parents who smoke tend to snore more. And it's also advisable to avoid alcohol before bed. Not only does alcohol increase snoring, drinking before bed can even induce obstructive sleep apnea in people who don't have the disorder. Alcohol effect on snoring and sleep is dose related. So if you tend to drink multiple drinks, start by cutting back. If that doesn't reduce your snoring, Try to stop drinking a few hours before bed or consider cutting out alcohol altogether. Yeah, the way we sleep is another factor. By sleeping on our side, that would also prevent snoring. But please, the, there are more videos on this channel. Just hook up, watch more, and uh, you make me 